Hi there, I'm Cooper from Zorad Engineering and today I'm going to show you how we prepare 3D printed parts just like this one, carbon coat them, and then copper coat them in order to make them useful electrodes for cutting through things like this hardened steel bar. We're able to get some pretty interesting shapes and utility out of these and we would love to show the process and share it with you guys here. So the first thing that we're going to want for this process is going to be this 3D printed cap electrode. Um, it's just a plain piece of blue PLA. This was printed on a monoprice printer, a very simple and expensive printer. And there's nothing too remarkable about this plastic. Um, what we're actually going to end up doing is coating this with uh, a fine graphite powder and then electroplating it with copper. And that's going to give us a fairly decent quality electrode similar to this one right here. Um, this is just blue PLA again that we did the same process on. You can see we've got a copper coating on here. It's pretty strong. It doesn't really come off on my hand at all. So the first thing we're going to want is actually we're going to need our acrylic solvent. This is methylene chloride. Uh, that is the main thing that we've found that actually will melt PLA and act as a solvent on it. Uh, we just use Weld On 4. It's pretty easy to get at hobby stores. Um, and we're going to mix that with a bit of carbon powder, graphite powder. You can see here I've actually already mixed it in this container. Um, it's nothing too remarkable about this stuff, but you can See, it just looks like, you know, a pencil tip powdered and a poisonous solvent. So do wear gloves for this process. Um, so now I'll just go ahead and take my... This is going to be the holder for our electrode. Um, this is a standard drill electrode that we actually used in another video. But I've left the tip exposed. So this is going to act as our main conductor for the electroplating and the actual electrochemical machining process later on. So I'll take our blank here, the cap as we call it in this case, just because it goes on like a cap. And I'm going to press it on until we've got that brass. Pardon me, there's cars outside. Um, so we're going to press it on until that brass is decently... Uh, flush with the surface and then we're going to actually wait one second I had to get some super glue. I'll end up cutting this video a few times just to speed things up I think but we take our super glue and we're gonna just make sure this is pretty well connected on the actual surface there nothing too crazy here nothing uh, very skillful in this process Okay, and we'll just wait for this to set. Okay, now that our super glue has set long enough that I'm willing to let it set, um, we're going to take our pre-mixed solvent and graphite powder mixture. And this is, this can be anywhere from 50-50 solvent and graphite to this one probably being closer to 25% graphite, 75% uh, solvent. We've experimented with a couple different mixtures of this and found that as long as you get good impregnation of the surface with your uh, graphite solvent mixture, it's not a really huge deal what the actual admixture is. Um, well, you know, actually I, f I forgot something. I'm actually going to have to tape around the edges here. I don't want to get any excess graphite on the edges of the electrode itself. We want to insulate it as best as possible. So I'm just going to use a bit of standard um, packing tape for that. Let's see what we can do about this.
Okay, now that's been coded decently on there. Um, now we're going to be able to actually use our graphite solvent mixture here. So again, I'm going to make sure it is well mixed. This uh, methylene chloride solvent is very, very thin. It's one of the thinnest solvents I've used. And the graphite has a tendency to want to settle out. So do make sure you mix well as you end up using it. And I'm going to try to show you this in detail. You just take a little bit of this solvent graphite mixture, place it on the surface like that, and use your glove at hand to kind of drag that across the surface to every exposed portion. And I'm just going to do that one more time in these spots that look a little bit um, more exposed, where you can still see the color on there. And again, just kind of take it and drag. And that's it. That is the hardest part of this process. An important part of it is to make sure that you get decent connection with the actual brass tubing or whatever uh, electrical connection you're going to use for uh, electroplating this. Okay, so as this dries, let me go set up our electroplating process. Um, I'll bring everything over here so you can see it. Okay, and we're back. Uh, in that meantime, I've set up our electrochemical process here, our plating process. Here we have eight ounces of tap water with um, about one ounce or a heaping tablespoon of copper sulfate and that's, uh, we acidify that with uh, acetic acid. In this case I'm using acetic acid. We would want uh, to use sulfuric acid in a proper plating setup but white vinegar is what I had access to so you I put about two fluid ounces in there. We're looking for a hydrogen donor in this case. I'm not going to bore you with the electrochemistry. Um, over here we have our lab power supply. This is going to be used to actually stimulate the plating process. It's our energy input for that. And we're going to try to keep our current down around 0.1 amps for the whole process, maybe a little bit lower. Um, in, in that way of keeping a low current, we're going to get a nice, smooth, even, and as dense as possible of a deposition of copper on our, uh, in, in this case, it's, it's our cathode here. Um, so let's set it up. I'm going to just turn my dials down as much as possible and turn on the power. Okay, we're trying to push low voltage with that. I'm going to take this bad boy place them in here as far away as I can get from our anode in the first place while keeping it submerged. I work on this for a little bit here. Okay, so that's fine. That'll work for me. We have our cathode submerged as well as our copper anode and our copper sulfate solution. Now we're going to go ahead and Turn our voltage up a little bit until we get ideally somewhere near 0.1 amps. This is a slightly older power source, but that that'll work for me. Um, I don't know if we're seeing any yet, but we might be getting some bubbling off of our uh, cathode there. Well. Anyway, we let this rest for a bit, and what we're looking for is a nice, even, smooth, and relatively light coating of copper on our surface. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, and I've been kind of monitoring our voltage, trying to keep it pretty low. Um, the lower you have your amperage, and you're actually still getting plating occurring, the better your plating is going to be. Um, so let's just take out our part and give it a little bit of an inspection here. Just dry it off, get any excess copper off of there. And um, 
this is looking pretty good. It's it's only been a few minutes, like I said, so our coating's still pretty thin. But you can see we're getting a nice, even copper coat on there. Um, I'm going to take off this tape now. Just see what we can see underneath that. Okay, and so you can see right on the side of the uh, electrode, this is pretty important in my opinion, we've got almost no overhang of that copper. That's almost non-existent with this, so that's going to ideally help us help us a lot with, uh, excuse me, help us a lot with our overcutting and our side cutting in the electrochemical process. Um, you can see we've got a little bit of copper coming over the side there, but I might just be able to, yeah, and I, I can, I can sort of just scrape that off with my finger pretty decently, because in this case, the copper was really just building up on top of other copper that was well adhered to the graphite, which is now part of the plastic surface. Um, so there's a nice shot for you. So because of how this actually works, we're going to be able to get pretty high current densities at our machining area but very low current density is distal from the machining area as everything else is well insulated and it's not even made out of metal. Um, and then we've got a very conductive metal actually as our machining face here. And you can see that the copper has partially occluded our electrolyte source. So the um, business end of the electrode that actually pumps the fluid into the interelectrode gap has been partially obscured here. But I can actually just take any random tool. Let me get something here. Okay, so I just used some random tool I found and I uh, bored out the center there. So you can see that actually looks pretty decent. I would let this plate for a few hours at least. Um, ideally, you're going to have good chemistry with uh, sulfuric acid as your acid in your bath there. Uh, that's going to give you a much stronger and uh, brighter coating of copper on there. But still, this process has been quite good enough for us to actually machine other things. Like I showed you earlier in the video, this was machined using the same method. And using a rounded profile might not be the best way to show the detail you can actually get out of this. But I still do think it's pretty impressive. You know, try machining this at home without using a you know electrochemical process. I don't know what type of machine you would use to machine hardened steel in such an odd shape, but well, I guess you'd use ours. So anyway, thank you very much for watching our video today. If you haven't already, please subscribe down below and hit the bell icon. That's going to let you know every time we test a new electrode or we try a new electrolyte, do a new machining operation or anything like that. And as we do verify those operations, we're going to be uploading all of our new electrodes to our GitHub page and to our Keybase. You're going to be able to get those at the link in the description as well. Come chat with us on our Keybase page or leave a comment on this video telling us anything else you would like to see tested or tried out. Any cool ideas you might have, weird ideas off the wall stuff, I want to hear it. I need more things to test. So please stick around, a lot more cool stuff to come. Thank you.